enjoy doing the most is going to the Paris flea market and looking at beautiful old painted furniture. And what's so great about that is you're seeing centuries of wear and layer upon layer of different colors and finishes on those pieces of furniture. We call it patina. That's what draws us to it. I want to be able to show you how to recreate those beautiful finishes like you're going to see in the Paris flea market or beautiful antique shops in Rome or Florence. But the way you need to start looking at finishes is dissecting them and reverse engineering how they were originally done. And that's what I want to show you about today. So when you look at this old world finish, um, something that would be done in maybe the 15th or the 16th century, let's look down through the finish. What are you seeing? You're seeing a beautiful wood stain. A suggestion that maybe that piece in the very beginning was actually a stained piece of furniture then maybe it got a new owner and that new owner decided to paint it. And subsequent owners would layer it with what they wanted to have it on. So you're seeing that beautiful patina that's gotten through years of wear and years of application of different paint finishes. So the first thing in order to be able to recreate that look, we're going to have to stain our piece first. Now, here's the only caveat. If you're going to create a Toscana milk paint finish, a true old world finish, you're going to have to start with raw wood. So you're going to have to strip the piece. You cannot use an original finish that's already on that piece. So we're going to have to get down to raw wood. So if you have a cabinet maker or you like to make furniture yourself, it's great to be able to do that. Um, this is just a piece of trim. All of you know, as far as my background in decorative arts, that I love working with pieces of trim to create different finishes. So I'm going to show you here how to use one of our products in the Toscana uh, milk paint collection, and that's our stain. Our stain is made from crushed walnuts. It only comes in one color. You don't have to worry about choosing a lot of different colors, but I like this because it goes with almost every color palette. So I do want to be able to put on just some plastic gloves. It's not going to hurt my hands, but it will stain a good manicure. So I just want to make sure that you're protecting it. So I'm going to take my natural Siebel sponge, dip it into the actual stain itself so you see what pretty color it is. And then I like staining my pieces with a natural seawall sponge. It's quick and easy. I'm not concerned about brush marks or anything like that. I'm just trying to get 100% coverage of the stain on my piece. So it allows you to be able to see what it looks like. Be careful, it does kind of splatter, especially when you're working with a, with a sponge. So it lets you see the saturation that I want to be able to get 100% coverage. And then I'm going to want this to dry. It's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes to air dry so where it goes down um, into one continuous color. Um, now after the piece that we applied the stain has dried, it's going to dry down to look like this. It's just a beautiful matte finish. There's nothing else that I want to do to it. The first thing that we want to be able to do in preparing for a real textural finish is going to be making our cracked gesso. Now, this is a proprietary product as well as a proprietary process that I've created um, from my bodega days in Florence, Italy. So I'm going to show you, it's going to come in a powder form like this. You're going to mix it one part cracked gesso to one part water. Now, if you've worked with other milk paint products in the past and you've painted it on, you'll notice that it's just a, um, a very flat surface area. It can be really interesting in applying different waxes and glazes, but adding this cracked gesso is going to totally revolutionize the way you're going to see milk paint finishes from here on out. So I'm just going to take a little plastic spoon, and here I've got these containers because I like being able to use them as measuring tools. Remember, you're going to use one part cracked gesso and one part water. I just want to make sure that they're even. So I'm going to need to add a, just a little bit more. The shelf life on mixing this is only going to be about two weeks. So that's why I really only want you to mix what you need for this particular project. The other thing is after you've mixed it up and maybe you have it in a container like this, be sure and put it in the refrigerator. So you see I had equal parts, just regular tap water, equal parts of the cracked gesso, 
I'm going to put my lid on it, secure it tightly, and then shake it well. This is going to allow this to be able to neutralize. You can look at the bottom. You want to make sure that none is sticking. You can use a small hand blender if you want, but if you're only going to need a small amount, it's really easy to use a mason jar or a little clear jars, baby jars. I do prefer to allow this to be able to sit overnight before I actually use it on my project. And the reason for that is it allows everything to get dissolved really well. So I would just make it the night before, put it in the refrigerator, take it back out, and allow it to get to room temperature before you work with it. Don't use a chilled cracked gesso. It's not going to be as desirable. So I want to make sure that I don't paint with any foam. I want to make sure that I get all that off. Make sure that it's stirred up well. Do I have a little? Because I've got this, I'm just going to pour a, a little bit of this cracked gesso through a cheesecloth because I don't want that foam. To go into my paint. Now I've made sure that my stain finish is nice and dry and I'm going to come back and paint my gesso on top of it. Now it's going to have a, a really um, thin consistency, kind of like a very thin pancake batter. Once it dries down, it's going to look like this. It's going to be more white. Now, this is really important. So I want you to come back with some 400 grit sandpaper and sand your piece down where it's nice and smooth. You're gonna notice this cracked gesso is gonna dry really hard. It's gonna have a tendency to almost feel rough to the touch. So I just want you to hit it with some sandpaper. You're also gonna notice when you hit it with the sandpaper, it's gonna go wider. That's desirable, we want that. All right, so you want to make sure after you've sanded it that you come back with a clean china bristle brush just to be able to get the residue off before you actually start to paint. If you put your layer of cracked gesso on really thin, you're going to have less texture and less crack. If you put it on a little heavier, you're going to have a heavier crack and it's going to be more textured. So just remember that when you're doing it. I really don't want you to put on two layers. I don't want you to, to build it up too, too much because it really will compromise the integrity of your painted finish when you go to apply your milk-based paint.